Last May the 4th, I looked at the incredible new engine for Dark Forces called the Force Engine, which is still very much a work in progress and has come leaps and bounds in the past year, so I was fully prepared to do an update video on that. Then OpenJDK F2 happened. OpenJK is an entirely different project and has Jedi Knight 2 and Jedi Outcast covered, with those titles based on the popular id Tech 3 engine. But the original Jedi Knight was five years prior to that and ran on LucasArts' in-house Sith engine. It's been a topic of much discussion over the years from vocal fans of a massively underrated FPS who have been calling for a remaster or port for decades now. Me talking about a potential Jedi Knight remaster is one of the most popular videos on my channel. Most of the other great shooters from that time period have received loving updates. But aside from a recent series of compatibility fixes, the Jedi Knight found on digital platforms is actually worse than the original. A sad position for a game that was once considered the best first person shooter ever made, prior to a certain Valve title coming around. Voiced characters, NPCs, a fully 3D world, complete with hardware acceleration and huge maps. Jedi Knight did so many innovative things the year before Half-Life and Unreal came around, and more and more people are beginning to remember that, given enough hindsight. Now we have two separate porting projects. Smith is a closed source alternative re-implementation, but that's another video for another time. A link to that project is in the description of this video. OpenJKDF2 is a function by function re-implementation of Jedi Knight written in C, with 64-bit ports of the game to both Mac OS and Linux, though the latter will require you to compile it yourself as no binaries have been released. Those who hate compiling native binaries will be happy to learn that the Windows version works on Proton, and should either Proton or Windows users want to run it from Steam, you simply rename the executable as Jedi Knight.exe, after renaming the old one of course. According to creator Shiny Quagsire, files are organised as closely to the original game as possible, and they studied the symbols from the Grim Fandango remaster in order to do that as well as making scattered assertions from various other games. The result is a plug and play executable with a handful of additional files, and of course it requires the original game files in order to play. If you're on Windows or want to use Proton, you dump the new files into the root directory of your game. The windowed mode should pop up once you run the new executable, and full screen is available in the typical Jedi Knight options section. So what goodies has their endeavour bestowed upon us? The original Jedi Knight had a lot of resolution support and graphical options for a game its age, but OpenJKDF2 takes it one step further, with better widescreen and ultra-wide support. The vertical field of view is modified depending on the resolution picked, and with the new FOV calculations, you can see your gun properly as well now, irrespective of resolution. You can also specify in the menu how your FOV is calculated, meaning that if you want to go back to the old ways you can. And there's even high DPI support, plus the HUD and menus automatically scale with them. So feel free to tinker and adjust at your leisure until you've got the viewpoint you want. Just don't take it too far, otherwise you'll get motion sick. Ugh. Texture filtering of old games is a thing. Should those low resolution textures look too jarring for your sensibilities, usually I turn it off, but not here. Most importantly, the frame rates have been altered. You can now have 60 frames a second and higher in Jedi Knight. This is a wonderful development for a game that previously had a terrible cap on rates and you can toggle the frame rate limiter directly in the menu again. Bloom is a nice touch without being over the top, and SSAO or Super Sampling Anti-Aliasing will make you feel like you're playing a game from the 2000s, not the 90s. As if that wasn't enough, Screen Space Ambient Occlusion also appeared in a recent update, though it will still draw on lightsabers clipping through walls currently. Judging from the rate of updates, I'm sure that'll be fixed in due course. Keep in mind that all the above effects may come at a frame rate penalty, 
All the footage you've seen captured so far has been with a 10-year-old quad-core emulating the program on Linux Mint through Proton on top of the other effects. For those who like things a little brighter or darker, gamma values have also been added to improve the atmosphere. The gloomy back alleys of Narshida have never looked better. Last but not least, there's preliminary mod support for high poly replacement models, like Jedi Knight Enhanced. You just throw the gob files in a folder called Mods and OpenJKDF2 will read them, though bloom effects may not work on the higher poly models. Key rebinding and mouse support is still about as good as the old game, so you'll probably want to spend a few minutes tweaking that in menus, so that Kyle's neck doesn't lurch about like it's on a roller coaster. With the sound aging well and the gameplay being classic, and I do mean classic, the biggest stumbling block for Jedi Knight players were the compatibility issues and frame rates. These have largely been eliminated by this project. I'm so impressed with OpenJKDF2, and because it's open source, if you see any problems, you can raise an issue with the project over on GitHub. By using good coding practices and adhering to the original intentions of the developer rather than attempting to reinvent the wheel, Shiny Quagsire has gifted us a beautiful project that allows fans to play the game from start to finish with a new appreciation for this venerable old classic. As of writing this, we're only on version 0.3.12 so it's still very much a project in its infancy, but the entire campaign is apparently playable, and the more people who play through it and report issues, the faster it will be able to grow and improve. Just don't try to load your old saves. It didn't work out for me. And because it's nowhere near finished, there's gonna be a few graphical glitches and bits and pieces that aren't quite right. Now this glorious journey through the Force is a few updates, quality of life mods and upscaled textures away from being just as good as any other remastered or retro style FPS on the market. Just remember while playing, despite all these improvements, it is a 90s shooter. So expect to get lost and then killed in all kinds of devious and horrible ways until you learn better. Jedi Knight does not hold your hand and the combat is stiff and difficult without judicious use of force bars to aid you. Who knows, this could lead to further improvements on the gameplay front to bring it more in line with its sequels, which nailed the lightsaber combat and had better AI. Those who are up to the challenge, feel free to grab the nearest blaster rifle and start spraying it at Gran on Nar Shadda in a murderous rampage all over again. It's good to be Kyle Katarn. And it's finally really good to play Jedi Knight again.